Check this shit out. All right, time for more action figure based 8 bit madness with G.I. Joe The Atlantis Factor. This is the sequel to G.I. Joe Real American Hero, released a year earlier, and while the company names on the cover may have you think that these two would be related in name only, both games were actually developed by the same company, a bizarro studio named Kid, who I talk about a lot on this channel. They kind of had a gift for making interesting off-kilter titles with distinct graphics and design choices. Last week I talked about their first NES Joe game, G.I. Joe Real American Hero. I wouldn't usually say you need to watch an old video of mine in order to follow along with a new one, but these two titles share a ton in common, so inevitably I'll be referencing Real American Hero a lot here. In that first review I spent a lot of time talking about the cartoon series, the characters, the game developers, and more, and so as not to repeat myself too much, I'm gonna keep the focus here on the gameplay of Atlantis Factor, and y'all can refer back to the Real American Hero video for more info if you're so inclined. The story picks up immediately after the ending of the last game. Even though you destroyed the enemy base and Cobra Commander with it, the explosion actually revealed an ancient Atlantean power source, which the bad guys then used to raise their leader in the lost civilization of Atlantis back from the dead. All right, I like it. There actually is quite a bit more story peppered in here, which is cool. At least it's more specific to this Atlantis premise than the real American hero plot, which is a straightforward find and kill the bad guys type thing. The gameplay is a bit different from its predecessors as well. You'll start out with Hawk and Grease with the Acropolis looming bluely in the background. Once you complete the level, you'll find Wetsuit who will then join your crew. Afterward, you'll shoot back to the circuit board slash map screen, very much in the vein of a title actually made by Capcom, Bionic Commando. Here you can choose from three routes, all of which eventually lead to the main boss, but that then intersect with many bases along the way. After you complete a level, you'll usually find a fellow Joe who will then join your cause. Having played the entire game, I still have no idea what these pink or B icons mean on the map screen, as they each lead to random stages and pretty much all of them end with a new companion hopping on your bandwagon. The combat is also very similar, but with a few new additions. In Real American Hero, you could use your fists, but it was only really useful when you were trying to conserve ammo. In Atlantis Factor, some of the bosses will block your shots, meaning you can only take them down in hand-to-hand -hand combat, something gung-ho parachutes all the way down just to tell you. Damn, dude, even the Joes probably had pagers back in the day. Also, while in both games you can upgrade your weapons with these POW icons, now you can also improve your punching skill as well. I think this is a neat idea in theory, but as it was already kind of tedious to power up every Joe's weapon to max, the thought of having to do it again but for their fists seems pretty overwhelming and unnecessary. At least that's what I thought until I suddenly had a jump kick. And man, look at me go! But wait, there's more! As the game goes on, you'll also receive the pulse rifle, laser gun, and missile launcher, each of which can be individually upgraded by each playable character. Come on, that's too much! How would you ever be able to do that in one playthrough? It's not like these items that the enemies drop can be farmed if you just sit there and kill the same dude over and over. Each bad guy that has a power-up only drops it once, no matter how many times you kill him. And while the upgrades in Real American Hero are stationary, in Atlantis Factor they bounce all over the place, at speeds you can just barely catch up to. There's at least a 1 in 3 chance you'll miss them completely, and in this game where maxing out your stats is the only way to easily beat the game, yeah, that's a challenge on top of a challenge. The levels are much more straightforward than Real American, basically just run to the right till you find one of these engine blocks, and then heading back to the map screen to keep exploring. I will say while you don't need to go to every location, being able to fight at every intersection until I cleared the whole map was pretty satisfying. But, just to make you regret your commitment, the developers added in a few versions of the overly long bomb stages from Real American Hero, where you're planting explosives, and similarly with this Cobra Laboratory where I cannot tell what the objective is. You run around like usual, except now you can pop in and out of the doors, rolling thunder style. I checked every door, went to what I think is the end, and what am I missing? All of these rooms are empty! 
Well, it turns out I missed one. Yes, one of the 50 doors on this level gives you a cutscene explaining that Snake Eyes is being brainwashed. God. This is the most tedious experience, far greater than any of the aforementioned bomb-setting mazes from the OG Joe game, on par with the first level of Dr. Chaos in terms of excessive door opening. The boss fights are pretty bland compared to Real American, each of them taking place in these identically designed layers with varying colors. However, the sprites themselves have a lot of neat movements and actions that remind me of the bosses from Zen the Intergalactic Ninja. Also, when they die, they do this strange blocky radiation thing that erases the background as it spreads out. It's not the most impressive graphical effect I've seen, but there's something really unique and funny about this to me. The new Joes aren't just for show either, each of them has a unique ability that comes in handy in various locations. Wetsuit can go under the surface of the water where there's lots of power-ups, Roadblock can crawl to reach low areas, and Storm Shadow can upgrade his sword all the way up to Zelda 2 Down Thrust. Alright! Later you'll find Duke who was the main character in the previous G.I. Joe NES game. His special ability is that he can shoot up. Something that every Joe could do in Real American Hero, but for some reason the new recruits just did not learn. <laughs> Losers. Then later you even get Snake Eyes. Y'all, I know that sounds pretty cool, like Snake Eyes is awesome and all, but this is too much. Now I've got six people to swap between, with five upgradable weapons to max out for each of them, and when you pick up these late game additions, they suck. Just weak weapons and no health. Like Snake Eyes only has two bars. Two! I love, love the switching characters mechanic in NES games. I talk about it all the time. But here they overuse it to such a strong degree that it almost makes me wish I was only playing as Hawk this whole time. Some of the Joes you recruit can't be selected, but instead pop in to assist when you press select and up. Gung Ho will refill your ammunition by, uh, drinking gasoline? Spirit can refill one of your guys' health, while Big Bear can revive a dead buddy. I'm really unclear why these helper dudes are depicted as being so comically large compared to your regular character. Is this some kind of weird baby fetish I don't know about... yet? When I first played this game, I was confused about the character select and thought you could only pick one Joe at a time. Turns out that I just didn't understand this menu fully, and you scroll between them with select and add them to the squad with decide. This means that you can take between one and three Joes on a mission depending on how confident you're feeling. Atlantis Factor looks and plays very, very similar to Real American Hero, and without knowing all the programming details, I'd assume it uses the same game engine. Even the sprites for Snake Eyes and Duke look identical. And I point this out because not only does this not really feel like a whole new game, it kind of also feels like a lazy effort overall. Beyond the reused enemies like the hilarious Cobra Buzzbore, the developers also recycle stages like the aforementioned boss levels, and damn, how many times am I going to be exploring these same ruins? Also, for the weapons you're equipped with, the game gives you so little ammo, and as such you spend 90% of this experience punching enemies either to conserve bullets or because you ran out and have no option. Not only is this annoying because you can't upgrade the weapons unless you have ammunition first, but the game is also designed to be incredibly difficult to run through fists of blazing. There's just too many areas with hard to reach enemies that shoot hard to avoid projectiles. This in turn makes Storm Shadow the most valuable character, as his regular fist attack is a projectile flying off his sword. That is pretty cool. Atlantis Factor is not a bad title by any means. Everything I would say about a game to rate its quality is here, from music to controls to graphics to gameplay, and in a vacuum I could definitely see how if you owned or rented Atlantis Factor back in the day you might rate it highly. But considering that video game sequels usually improve on the game they're following, that makes this a huge disappointment as nothing I can think of is made better here. The only real improvement is the map screen, which is a nice touch, and the additional characters and weapons, which seem great in theory, but are often more trouble than they're worth. And in general, this game is just kind of boring. The levels are often mindless collectathons, where you slowly kill one enemy at a time and swap between either your guns or your Joes in order to maximize whatever power ups emerge from their corpse. As such, everything moves so slow. <laughs> At times it barely feels like you're playing an action platformer, and more like you're running through a bonus stage intended to pad your stats a bit. 
Of the two G.I. Joe games, I absolutely recommend Real American Hero over Atlantis Factor, and maybe over a lot of solid action platformers out there on the NES. But I'd say if you're nostalgic or especially gung-ho for goofy military buddies, you could probably pass on Atlantis Factor. Big, big shout out to my buddy Chad, who's been a longtime subscriber and commenter on this channel, and who recently joined my Patreon. He's got his own rad channel, Chad's Beer Reviews, so if you're a fan of the suds, check him out. Who wants a body massage? Uh, what did he just say to us?